Commander Robbie Trotter, United States Navy, Prospective Commanding Officer, DDG-117. Captain Brian Lawrence, United States Navy, Supervisor of Shipbuilding, Gulf Coast. Dr. Elisa Ignatius, maid of honor and granddaughter of DDG 117's namesake and sponsor. Command Master Chief Alan Tapley, United States Navy. Prospective Command Master Chief, DDG 117. Captain Casey Moten, United States Navy, Program Manager, DDG-51 Shipbuilding. Lieutenant Nicholas Dewhurst, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy, 22nd Naval Construction Regiment. Rear Admiral Bill Galinas, United States Navy, Program Executive Officer, Ships. Ms. Gloria Valdez, Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Ships, Office of the Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Research, Development, and Acquisition. Principal Speaker for today's christening ceremony, Admiral John Richardson, United States Navy, Chief of Naval Operations. The Honorable Philip Gunn, Speaker of the Mississippi House of Representatives. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our ship's sponsor, Mrs. Nancy Ignatius, and our husband, our ship's namesake, former Secretary of the Navy, Paul Ignatius, escorted today by Mr. Brian Cusius, Executive Vice President, Huntington Ingalls Industries, and President, Ingalls Shipbuilding. Navy Band Southeast will now render honors to Admiral John Richardson. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the presentation of the colors by the Pascagoula High School Navy Junior ROTC and our national anthem to be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance and Invocation. Yeah. Color Guard, parade the colors.
pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Color Guard, retire the colors. Lieutenant Dewhurst. Let us pray. Almighty, most holy God, we come before you today to give thanks for our beloved country in the United States Navy. Throughout history, our country has been called upon to bring peace and stability throughout the world. As our Navy operates forward across the globe, we call on you to protect the many service members who are at the forefront of conflict. We humbly ask your blessing on the families whose selfless sacrifice allows our mission to continue. A blessing on the commanders whose orders we follow, and a blessing upon the leaders of our country who determine our course. Today, we are gathered together to christen a new tool in the arsenal of freedom. To remain the preeminent maritime force we have assembled to christen the Polygnatius. We are thankful for the builders and crew who have tirelessly worked to ensure her success. The Paul Ignatius inherits the storied heritage of its namesake. It is his courage, bravery, and wisdom through some of our nation's darkest hours that are an inspiration to those who study his life. Lord, we ask that you imbue the vessel that bears his name with these characteristics. God, we ask that you anoint Commander Trotter with wisdom. We pray humble blessings upon his family and blessings upon the path that you lead him. Help him to be devoted to duty strengthened by courage and thoughtful in action. May her future leadership and crew perform the task with honor that is befitting their position, courage in the heat of adversity and commitment to the mission that they are appointed. We pray, God, that you strengthen this vessel. It was Paul Ignatius that said you can fight back an enemy, but you are powerless when nature turns violent. Therefore, we ask that when she sails in stormy waters, you, O oh God, be the steady guiding hand. In his first inaugural address, it was President McKinley who stated, war shall never be entered upon until every agency of peace has failed. Peace is preferable to war in almost every contingency. We pray Poly the Paul Ignatius is an instrument of peace, superior in war, and a subsequent reflection of her namesake. We pray these things in your most holy name, the name that is above all names, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Officials, please stand. Secretary and Mrs. Ignatius are joined today by many family members and friends, including sons, daughters, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. Please help me make them welcome. <laughs> Rear Admiral Timothy Gallaudet. United States Navy, oceanographer and navigator in the, of the Navy, and commander of the Naval Meteorological and Oceanographic Command. Thank you, sir. <laughs> A lady always welcome at Ingalls Shipbuilding, the president of the U.S. Society of Sponsors, Mrs. Linda Winter. Commander Leonard Cannon, United States Navy, Prospective Executive Officer, DDG-117, and the crew of DDG-117. <laughs> Rear Admiral
Admiral Tommy Reinard, United States Navy, retired, Vice President of Education, Navy League of New Orleans. We have leaders of our shipyard unions here with us this morning. Please stand and we welcome you. A special welcome to our shipyard's workforce development partner here in, on, along the Gulf Coast, especially Mr. Jimmy Estes, Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College, and his wife, Lynn. Please help me welcome Huntington Ingalls Industries Board Member Major General Augustus Leon Collins, former Adjutant General of the Mississippi National Guard. Thank you all for being with us this morning. And now, please join me in welcoming our host for today's christening ceremony, Brian Cusius, Executive Vice President, Huntington Ingalls Industries, and President, Ingalls Shipbuilding. Well, thank you, Jim. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of all Ingalls Shipbuilders, welcome to the christening of the Arleigh Burke Class Destroyer, DDG-117, Paul Ignatius. Mrs. Ignatius, Secretary Ignatius, Admiral Richardson, Ms. Valdez, Speaker Gunn, Admiral Galinas, distinguished platform guests, my fellow shipbuilders, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you all. We also have a special group of veterans that are with us here today that I'd also like to recognize. The Armed Forces Retirement Home in Gulfport is home to 500 men and women representing all service branches. These residents have served in World War I, the Korean War, and Vietnam War, include recipients of the Bronze Star, the Silver Star, the Lone Sailor Award, and the Congressional Medal of Honor. The average age of these residents is 82 years young. Ladies and gentlemen, the Armed Forces Retirement Home, would you please give us a wave or stand so we can say thank you for your service here in the back. Of They still wear their uniforms after all these years, I don't know. <laughs> well, what, what a rare privilege we have this morning to have a ship's namesake at a major milestone event. It's my sincere honor to welcome to Ingalls DDG 117's namesake, Paul Ignatius, a man who first, firsthand saw many of the critical events of the 20th century. When he was 18 years old in 1938, Robert Ingalls Sr. set the foundation of the shipyard. Our shipyard has been building ships for 79 years, and Secretary Ignatius has been serving his country for almost as long. He was a naval officer in World War II, during which he participated in the Battle of Lady Gulf to liberate the Philippines. He served as Under Secretary of the Army under John F. Kennedy, Assistant Secretary of Defense, and Secretary of the Navy under Lyndon Johnson. He epitomizes the leadership and agility that has propelled our nation forward and I couldn't think of a better namesake for DDG-117. What a life of service. Sir, thank you for being here today. We are equally honored to have Mrs. Nancy Ignatius, our namesake's wife, as our ship sponsor. Nancy has been on the forefront of environmental advocacy for decades, a champion for environmental causes long before they became mainstream issues. She's worked as a subject matter expert with the Department of Energy and EPA, a strong advocate for the environment, and I know she'll be a strong advocate for this great ship too. DDG-117 is the 31st Arleigh Burke class destroyer built at Ingalls. We built, we have four more under construction. As you can see, destroyers are all around us. That makes the president very happy. Ingalls ships are really built with one goal in mind, to protect the brave men and women who will protect our freedom. Working closely with our Navy partner, we continue to improve on every ship we build, and Paul Ignatius is no exception. Today, we're investing hundreds of millions of dollars in modernizing our facilities. Along with our partners, the leadership of the great state of Mississippi. Combine that with a hot production line, talented and experienced shipbuilders, 
and we're uniquely positioned to provide our country with the highest quality, most capable destroyers in our fleet. Simply stated, Ingalls builds the finest warships the world has ever known right here in Pasigula, Mississippi. Our Aegis Astoria program has an exceptional team of professional shipbuilders. Great American patriots like Lisa Avery, an electrical foreman working on this ship. She and her crew have achieved something remarkable. They've worked more than 850 days without a single reportable safety incident. 850 days and counting. And there's a rumor out there if she hits 1,000 days, someone owes her a steak dinner. I think that's right, George. Lisa attributes this record to the sense of urgency her crew brings to the job every day. They make safety their top priority, and it's embedded in their culture. Well done, Lisa. And like Bill Jones, the whole superintendent of our integrated product shop, nearly a 30-year shipbuilder, Bill began his career as Ingalls as a shipfitter. His current role, he, he oversees the production of the highly specialized sonar dome that's integrated in this magnificent hull. Before joining us at Ingalls, Bill served as the United States Marine Corps, and he's more than 1,400 proud military veterans who are now part of England that we're proud to call our co-workers. These are just a few of the thousands of shipbuilders that build the finest ships the world's ever known. I want us that these shipbuilders and all the English shipbuilders please stand to be recognized. In closing, I'd like to thank you again for coming to this historic event. May God bless the officer and the crew that will, se that will serve on this ship and protect our nation. And may God bless America. Thank you. Please welcome the Honorable Philip Gunn, Speaker of the Mississippi House of Representatives. Well, good morning, and thank you so much for allowing me to be here on this occasion. It is my privilege to come here today on behalf of the state of Mississippi and welcome you to this exciting event. This is a lot of fun. I'll tell you, I've never been to one of these before, and I've had a great time already and look forward to the, uh, the rest of the ceremony. This is a great year for the state of Mississippi. Mississippi was founded as a state in 1817. For those of you who are good at math, you realize this is 2017, that this year is our 200th anniversary. It's our 200th birthday. We're excited to be able to celebrate that, and we welcome those of you who are not from Mississippi to our state today as we celebrate this. We have a very storied history. Some of it's good, some of it's not. We're proud of some of it, some of it we're not. But one of the things that we are most proud of in our history is Ingalls Shipbuilding. Ingalls Shipbuilding began 79 years ago, and today it is the largest manufacturing employer in the state of Mississippi, and that's something that we ought to be incredibly proud of. That tells you the importance that Ingalls plays in the life of Mississippi. <clears throat> But more, th more than that, <clears throat> one thing that we're proud of more than that is the role that English shipbuilding plays in the defense of our nation. You know, we enjoy a lot of freedoms here in Mississippi and in this country. I was thinking about that as I rode down here this morning. We have the freedom to go wherever we want to in this nation. You have the freedom to do whatever kind of job you want to do. You have the freedom to raise your family the way you want to raise them. You have the freedom to go to church wherever you want to go to church. You have the freedom to move about in your daily activities however you want to do it, as long as you stay legal. We have more freedoms in this country than any other country in the history of the world. Ingalls Shipbuilding has been an integral part of that from the beginning of Ingalls. Founded 79 years ago, immediately it became active in World War II. Ingalls Shipbuilding worked around the clock to make aircraft carriers, destroyers, and other boats that would be used in the defense of this nation. 
And as recently as two days ago, when the United States fired missiles on Syria, the two boats that fired those missiles were made right here in Ingalls Shipyard in Pascagoula, Mississippi. So as you can see, between those two points, World War II and as recently as two days ago, and every point in between, Ingalls Shipyard has been an integral part in providing that freedom that I just described to you a second ago. Every one of us ought to feel the weight of that. Every one of us ought to be grateful for that. And every one of us ought to be proud of what takes place here at Ingalls. Considering this rich history, I'm honored to be here today as we christen the Paul Ignatius and celebrate not only Ingalls' role in the history of the state of Mississippi, but its role in the history not only of this country, but of the entire world. Thank you so much for letting me be here today. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Now, please help me welcome Ms. Gloria Valdez, Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Ships, Office of the Assistant Navy Secretary of the Navy for Research, Development, and Acquisition. Thank you. To our namesake, the Honorable Paul Ignatius, our sponsor, Nancy Ignatius, Admiral Richardson, Speaker Gunn, Mr. Kushis, Society of Sponsors President, Linda Winter, the entire Ignatius family, officers and crew of Paul Ignatius, distinguished guests, and all of you who have come to Pascagoula today to witness the outstanding christening of this magnificent ship. Good morning. As we celebrate today, it is an honor for me to stand here before you, here in Pascagoula, representing Acting Secretary of the Navy, Sean Stackley, at the christening of this great ship, Paul Ignatius, DDG-117. It is appropriate that we remember and say thank you to the thousands of deployed sailors, Marines, soldiers, and airmen who, along with their families, are sacrificing so much to keep this great nation free. And to all those veterans in the audience, I too today thank you for your service to our nation. I also want to thank our hosts here at Ingalls Shipbuilding who have arranged today's wonderful events, and to the many men and women responsible for the construction of Paul Ignatius. Shipbuilding is a team effort, and it takes a strong, dedicated Navy and industry team to build our nation's fleet. It takes perseverance, hard work, and attention to detail to meet every inch stone in the ship's life that gets it to today's milestone. To the men and women of Ingalls Shipbuilding, the supervisor of Shipbuilding Gulf Coast, and the Navy DDG 51 class program office, you have labored tirelessly to build this extraordinarily capable ship, and I congratulate you on another job well done. With this christening, we also celebrate the namesake of this formidable ship, former Secretary of the Navy, Paul J. Ignatius, who proudly began his service to this country as a commissioned Navy Lieutenant during the Second World War. The son of Armenian immigrants, Paul Ignatius continued his service to our country as the Under Secretary of the Army, then as the Assistant Secretary of Defense, and then finally served as our nation's 59th Secretary of the Navy between 1967 and 1969. Much like Paul Ignatius helped lead the Navy through his distinguished service, the 67th Arleigh Burke class guided missile destroyer will proudly carry her namesake's legacy for many decades and over many oceans and seas as she empowers our sailors and Marines to protect our great nation. Who better to serve these men and women as they serve our nation than this vessel's sponsor, Nancy Ignatius. Nancy's long history of championing environmental causes long before they became mainstream exemplifies her service, her civic duty service. Nancy, your dedication and tenacious service to our country will indeed inspire the officers and crew of Paul Ignatius as they sail the seas. Commander Trotter, congratulations to you on your assignment as commanding officer of this fine vessel, and good luck to you 
your officers and your crew and the days ahead. We know you will all serve our Navy and guide this warship in the honor of its namesake and its sponsor. And to all who are present today, we are indeed privileged to witness the introduction of this fine ship into our Navy. May God bless her, her crew, her sponsor, her namesake and his family, and may God bless America. And now, please welcome our keynote speaker this morning, Admiral John Richardson, Chief of Naval Operations. Well, good morning, everybody. And, uh, Thank you for having us down here. Thank you to Ingalls for hosting this event. It is so terrific to be here at this momentous occasion. I'd like to just extend a, a, and add my welcome to all of our distinguished guests, and most especially to the Ignatius family. It has been an honor sitting out. First, I've got to say first, it's just great to be down here in Mississippi. And, yeah. <laughs> Before I get too long, and when I'm done with this speech and when this ceremony is over, all I get to do is go back to Washington, D.C., so I hope you don't mind if I let this linger for a little while and <laughs> stretch it out, take advantage of this great Southern hospitality. It's just fantastic. You know, you walk around, people call, hey, darling, how's it going? Hey, sweetie, how's it going? I go back to Washington, D.C., they call me things, but it's not darling and sweetie, so <laughs> I gotta say that. And uh, it, it has been just a terrific honor sitting up here on the stage listening to our distinguished guests and, uh, and their terrific speeches. Uh, but I have to tell you, it's a bit daunting also to be the fourth person to uh, speak, is the fourth person in a row, really, to speak about the exact same thing, right? And so, you know, you've got to wonder uh, what else, else is there to say at this point about this. But, uh, and if that's not hard enough, uh, consider our audience. Uh, first and foremost, we have the former Secretary of the Navy and the namesake of this ship, the Honorable Paul Ignatius, uh, and his absolutely lovely wife, Nan. And uh, you know, a, a fabulous speaker. You know, if you were, I mean, the talk of the town this morning is the terrific address you gave the team last night, uh, Mr. Secretary. And so, so there's that. Uh, and then if that weren't enough, uh, just consider their four children here in the front row. Son David, acclaimed novelist and journalist, uh, editor and columnist for the Washington Post. Uh, the Honorable Amy Ignatius, New Hampshire Superior Court Judge. A uh, son, Adi, the editor-in-chief of the Harvard Business Review. And daughter, Sarah, another prominent attorney, teacher, uh, and the first executive director of the National Association for Armenian Studies and Research. And so to just put it succinctly, we've got, you know, the judge and jury right here, you know, <laughs> to, to, to just do, you know, it will be rendered, right? The judgment will be rendered on this talk. And so it's doubly daunting. And so, you know, with that all in mind, I think at some point discretion is a better part of valor. And it might be just the safest thing to thank you all for being here, and God bless America. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> all right, all kidding aside, it is great to be here. In fact, I would say that if you identify yourself with the Navy in any way, in any respect, this is the place to be today, right here, right now. And you've got to wonder, you know, so, you know how can you say that? Um, well, first, there is a certain amount of authority that comes with being chief of naval operations, so I, I can say that. Uh, but I'll tell you, when you know, we folks in the Navy, we, we mariners, when we want to make sure we're in the right place, uh, we take a fix, okay? And a fix really is comprised of three lines of bearing or three arcs, uh, which, you know, we, we pick three suitable navigation aids, we cut a bearing to those aids, uh, and it's a very important to pick the right, you know, the right navigation aids, the right stars, if you will, to give you a solid fix. And uh, where those three lines or where those three arcs cross on your chart, you know, that is what your position is. That's where you are. So I would invite you all to join me this morning to, to take a fix, if you will. And the stars I'm going to pick for our fix today are from the constellation 
of body, mind, and spirit. And we'll shoot our first star, and we'll start with mind. The intellectual inspiration for the ship, her namesake, Secretary Paul Ignatius. Sir, we're so honored that you could be here today for this momentous occasion. And it's very fitting that we gather here to name a ship uh, after a man who has given so much of his life in the service of the Navy and in the service of the nation. To appreciate Secretary Ignatius's legacy of service to his, his nation and to appreciate how this warship embodies that service, uh, one really need no, look no further than the seal of the USS Paul Ignatius, the ship's seal. And so if we sort of take a look at it, uh, first, uh, there's a representation of the Secretary's California roots, uh, born in Los Angeles. And this is represented by the, the chief of the shield, borrowed from the seal of the University of California, his uh, proud Trojan alma mater. And the sun in the, seal, uh, the shield signifies the West, and according to the university's symbolism, signifies power and life. Uh, next, the Secretary's service during World War II on board the USS Manila Bay, the escort carrier. There's the cross swords that symbolize teamwork. And the first half of the ship's motto, always ready, is taken from the Manila Bay's motto. The second part of the ship's motto, fight on, of course, comes from the USC fight song. And finally, his service to the highest levels of government, from Assistant Secretary of the Army to Assistant Secretary of Defense, culminating as the 59th Secretary of the Navy, the three stars on the shield or the, the uh, seal uh, refer and, and, and symbolize the three years that Secretary Ignatius served as our Secretary from 1967 to 1969. The chevron, which alludes to the bow of a warship is colored white for excellence and recognizes Paul Ignatius as the backbone of the fleet. But Secretary Ignatius will be the first to tell you that he didn't achieve success all on his own. This is the humility of the man we honor today. And he was the product of many personal heroes himself that inspired him along the way. First is Vice Admiral Fitzhugh Lee, the CEO on Manila Bay, and a two-time recipient of the Navy Cross. He taught Secretary Ignatius the value of innovative thinking in response to damage caused by kamikaze bombers, installed a special sprinkler alarm that initiated spraying before impact and helped prevent the damage from major fires from spreading, no doubt saved countless lives and kept that ship in the fight. Another hero, Secretary George Marshall, just to give you a sense of how our namesake, Secretary Ignatius, participated in history, made history, Secretary Ignatius was in the crowd in the 1947 Harvard University commencement address where the Marshall Plan was unveiled. At, any time, at the time, like many other citizens in the audience, Secretary Ignatius didn't fully realize who could fully capture uh, their place in history, but he felt inspired by Marshall's commitment to the high calling of public service. In retirement, Secretary, you know, I say retirement, but it just doesn't fit at all, right? Secretary Ignatius, the one thing he, the only thing maybe he's failed at is retirement, because uh, right? he just hasn't retired, he hasn't stopped. Uh, but anyway, he serves uh, as, a, as a board member of the Marshall Foundation uh, to promote the same sense of service, public service, in the next generation of young leaders. And another hero, President John Kennedy, came into public service at the same time as Secretary Ignatius did, admired for his patience, his wisdom, and courage during his time in World War II and during the Cuban Missile Crisis. And I think like all of us, uh, President Kennedy's death left Secretary Ignatius with a profound sense of loss. And just as Secretary Ignatius drew inspiration from these heroes, I'm certain that the namesakes of future U.S. Navy warships will look to Paul Ignatius as a shining example of selfless service and will draw inspiration from him. 
And so if we think about the line of bearing, the arc that comes from cutting our first star, our minds are set on the fixed star that Secretary Ignatius provides. But to get a good fix, two more lines are required. And so let's continue to determine our position by examining our second star, spirit. Now from time immemorial, a new ship gets their spirit from their sponsor, carefully chosen to bond with the crew and invigorate them. And we are blessed to have Nan Ignatius as our fair sponsor. The wife of Secretary Ignatius for their entire lives, they will celebrate their 70th wedding anniversary this December, which I think in and of itself is worthy of a tremendous round of applause. And just like Secretary Ignatius, and this comes quote right from her children, she is a real force of nature. Learn to love boats as a young girl. In fact, Secretary courted Nan Ignatius during summers at their home on Watch Hill, Rhode Island. A concert pianist and an avid tennis player. Even at 91, her forehand packs a wallop. And uh, you know, it's one of the surest signs of spring, in fact, that the talk around the Ignatius house is that Nan Ignatius is working on yet another new serve. All right, this is a constant thing, constant life. Uh, she's had some experience in this christening business. Back in 1968, she launched the USS Seahorse. And so, Mrs. Ignatius, you know this is all about swinging from the hips, right? We want that bottle to break first try. But thank you so much for being our ship sponsor and for all the spirit that you have brought to this magnificent crew and ship and all that you will bring. So thank you so much. And so with the lines of, of mind and the fix on our spirit, it brings me to our third star body, the muscle and bones. And this, as I am sure you have all concluded by now, this is the ship built by all those magnificent shipbuilders here at Huntington Ingalls who make her so strong and tough. And also the crew who will bring her to life in a not too distant future at the commissioning. Now even though Secretary Ignatius spent much of his career serving at the highest levels of government, you have heard he served on the USS Manila Bay, and he always missed life at sea and the camaraderie he shared with his shipmates. In fact, leaving the ship in 1945 was an emotional experience, and if you've left a ship as part of a crew, you know what that feels like. And as he wrote in his terrific book on board, he quote, I'll just quote him, a ship was so many things. It was a home a place of work, and a neighborhood where you and your friends lived. If you think about those words, he got it exactly right. You know, a ship, and in fact, our business is about the people. And these Arleigh Burke destroyers provide combatant commanders with the ability to conduct a wide range of missions, the kind of flexibility that's increasingly important in a world of rising maritime competition. Today, Arleigh Burt destroyers are operating all across the globe. In February, five destroyers, the Barry, Fitzgerald, Stedham, McCampbell, and Mustin, sailed alongside our Japanese counterparts during Multi-Sail 17, a six-day exercise designed to improve interoperability with one of our key partners in the in the uh, Asian Pacific region, an increasingly important part of the world. Last month, the USS Laboon, part of the George H.W. Bush strike group, twice intercepted small stateless dows, small ships, and seized 
huge caches of ammunition and illegal drugs. And as you've heard just this week, USS Ross and USS Porter launched a combined 59 missile strike at aircraft, hardened aircraft shelters, petroleum logistics storage, ammunition supply bunkers, air defense systems and radars into Syria in response to the heinous use of chemical weapons. You know, uh, David, like his dad, mentioned of his dad that uh, the secretary to this day is one of the very best problem solvers that he's ever known. USS Paul Ignatius and her crew will no doubt solve their fair share of problems and rack up their own list of accomplishments. They will be doing the nation's work, providing credible options for our leaders for decades to come. They will be respected always, welcomed, a welcome news to our friends and our worst nightmare to our enemies. So let's review our position now that we've got our three lines of bearing, three fixed stars cut precisely here and put us pier side in Pascagoula, right where we are. Our minds are set by the inspiration provided by Secretary Ignatius and his life's example. Our spirit is strong, full of the vigor that Nancy Ignatius brings to everything she touches. And our body is tough. The best materials in the hands of the world's best shipbuilders and manned by the best crew America can produce. We are indeed on course and speed, fair in the channel. It has been my honor to celebrate a man who has given so much of his life to the Navy and the nation. And it is indeed for us and our allies and partners a day of celebration. But I would ask everybody here one favor. I would ask that when you finish your celebration, the day comes to a close. And when you put your head down, before you drift off to sleep, say a quick prayer for the Ignatius family. Say a prayer for the Paul Ignatius, the ship and her crew. For the shipbuilder who turned metal and wires into a warship that will go into harm's way. <clears throat> and pray for the sailors that will take her to sea. And those sailors, soldiers, airmen, and Marines deployed around the world, putting their life on the line, defending the very freedom that allows us to share this wonderful day. God bless you all. God bless the Paul Ignatius, the Ignatius family. God bless the United States Navy, and God bless America. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please join me in giving a warm southern Mississippi welcome to Secretary Ignatius. Thank you all very much. Uh, as Admiral Richardson mentioned, I grew up in Southern California, but I've never seen a better day than this one. And I thank Mississippi for this splendid day in which this ceremony is uh, taking place. Uh, I don't think I have to tell you what a pleasure it is for me uh, to be here in this great shipyard with Brian Cushus, the leader here, and other men and women of Huntington Ingalls, with Admiral Richardson, Chief of Naval Operations, Speaker Gunn, Secretary Valdez, and Mayor Belbin of Pascagoula, with Commander Bobby Trotter and other members of his officers, Taylor and Seaman who are going to be with him, and other distinguished guests. 
Let me begin by saying uh, how much I love and respect the United States Navy. My four years in the Navy as an officer in World War II was a transforming experience and fitted me to handle later responsibilities in government and industry with confidence and with good effect. I can remember vividly, even though it was almost 75 years ago, when I was became qualified as an officer of the deck underway, responsible for the safety of the ship on night watches while the captain and the other senior officers were getting some needed sleep. The Navy then and today offers young men and women so many opportunities to realize their full potential and to succeed in lives of public or private service. There are several people here that I want to thank especially for making this such a memorable day for me. First, the former Secretary of the Navy, Ray Mabus, former governor of the state of Mississippi, and one of the longest serving Navy secretaries in the Navy's history could not be with us today, but he is the one responsible for the fact that I am here today. And I thank Ray Mabus for that. Secondly, I want to salute a distinguished Naval officer, Admiral John Richardson, for his important role in these proceedings. The Navy is fortunate to have a person of such high intellectual stature and vigorous leadership at the Navy's helm in these troubling times. And I thank you, sir, for coming here, being with us, and for your remarks. I want to also express my appreciation to our host, Mr. Brian Cushis, and the other men and women of one of the world's, if not the world's greatest shipbuilders here at Huntington Ingalls, whose ships, as their motto proudly proclaims, are built stronger than steel. One of the great strengths of our country is the industrial might that build our ships, our tanks, and our airplanes that ensured victory in World War II and that continues to undergird our efforts to maintain stability amid the new threats that face, our, face us. As has been remarked before, it is special dramatic note that we are standing on the grounds where those two destroyers that fired the missiles on military targets were built. Uh, it gives an ad additional, it seems to me, significance to this occasion. And I think a sense of great uh, reward to the, I think, 12,000 men and women who comprise the workforce here at this, uh, at this great shipyard. They see the culmination of the hard work of the skills that they possess building these mighty ships that ultimately are called upon to respond sometimes to actions that we cannot accept and still be true to our own values as a nation. So I tip my hat to this industry group, and in most particular, to those of you here at, uh, at Ingalls. It is also a special pleasure for me to recognize Commander Robbie Trotter, his executive officer, Commander Cannon, whose father is here with us. I met him earlier in this morning. 
and I'm sure he's very proud of his son, Master Chief Petty Officer Tapley, and I see kind of man you'd like to serve with. If you've seen Commander, if you've seen Chief Tapley, he's a formidable figure and will give great leadership. Uh, and of the other officers and men and women of the crew, including the chief engineer whom I met last night, a woman graduate of the Naval Academy who's going to be tending those giant gas turbines that power this ship through the oceans of the world. Uh, I, uh, I really uh, commend uh, all of you for your service that is soon to come and for the opportunities that it will give you to achieve, as I say, the potential that, that all of us possess and that sometimes doesn't have an opportunity to be expressed, but the responsibilities that you will have in the Navy will give you ample opportunity to have. Finally, on a personal note, I want to say how happy I am that this ship is sponsored by my wife, uh, Nancy. Uh, as has been pointed out uh, later on this year in December, we will have been married uh, for 70 years. And uh, it's so happy. <laughs> As I said last night, the warranty was up years ago. <laughs> and I never renewed it, but things continued uh, very, very happily uh, along, along the way. I met Nan through my sister, who was her best friend at Wellesley College. And i just come back from uh, naval service and war and went to the Harvard Business School to complete my MBA degree. And my sister introduced us, and then with some trepidation, asked Nan after we'd met, what did you think of my brother? And Nan said, he looked kind of old. <laughs> so that was, a, that was a kind of a bad start to <laughs> to what became a, a very happy marriage. And I thank her for her love and support and for raising uh, our four kids to uh, lead, uh, I think, responsible lives. At a ceremony yesterday, Nancy presented a piece of granite from one of the spires of the Washington National Cathedral. And that will be included in a box of other items that will be welded to the mast of the ship. She and I hope that this precious piece of stone will assure God's blessing on the crew of the DDG 117 when it sails into harm's way. Now, when someone says Paul Ignatius, I'll have to ask whether that means the man or the ship. I hope very much it means both. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. For each christening, we randomly select a young lady who is affiliated with one of our shipbuilders to be the flower girl for the ceremony. Our flower girl this morning for Paul Ignatius is the daughter of Jill and Jeffrey Beck. Jeffrey is a test and trials mechanic on DDG 117. Please welcome Grace Elizabeth Beck.
And now it's time to christen a ship. Secretary and Mrs. Ignatius, Admiral Richardson, Speaker Gunn, Commander Trotter, and Mr. Cusius will now make their way to the platform.
Get a group shot of the party with the flower uh, girl, please. Mm -hmm. So I want you to step right there next to Mrs. Ignatius.